back behind this large Sony CRT TV is hiding another TV and this one here is a Panasonic plasma it's a 42 inch one we're not going to be doing a repair on this or anything we're actually going to be just taking it apart because like most of my uh, hopes and dreams the screen is shattered no point in saving it it's just going to be pretty much good for pulling some boards off of maybe some components just to work I don't know if the speakers are any good because this thing was sitting outside a uh, friend gave it to me uh, he said it got dropped or something at it there's a spot right here on the screen somewhere where you can tell that it like right here it looks like it's like some just smacked into there so that's where the broken lines kind of disperse from so yep this big CRT is still good though and bonus points if you can guess what it's for okay we're all set up on my makeshift mobile bench here and now we just got to get ourselves an impact driver because there's a ton of screws that we're going to have to remove. So yeah, impact driver will make it much easier for sure and faster. I'm going to need this thing back. What? No, I'm talking to myself. Okay. Alright, there's a bit of rust in here because like I said, this thing was sitting outside and I think it did get a little bit of water on it. Not really visible from the outside, but you can kind of see in there in some of the cans. There's this interesting little cover here that I'm kind of wondering what's behind it. Oops, I had the thing the wrong way. And it looks like it's some sort of a, I don't know, maybe like some programming headers or something in there. We'll take a look at the board once I remove it. But there's a bunch of screws like all over this the rear of this case. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove all those real fast. And then we can pull this back cover off. This screw right here appears to be stripped or something. It does not want to come off. I'm trying to pry it while I get it to turn, see if maybe it'll catch some threads or something. <laughs> and that's all the screws that have come out of the back so far. I don't think there's any other ones that need to be removed to get this off. Let's go ahead and see if this will lift off. And yep, there it goes. All right, and inside we find the usual assortments of boards that you would expect to see inside of a plasma TV. It's gonna be like a bunch of IGBTs and maybe some diodes or something right here on this heat sink. And we've got, it's like a little control board up here. I think there was, I don't know what was up in the front right there at the moment. It looks like that might be for the remote. And here's a little power button on this other board. We've got these little covers down here. I don't look like they're doing anything. Actually, it looks like they're just insulating. It looks like there might have been like a smaller speaker, maybe like a tweeter there. But all it has in this particular model is just these like six ohm speakers. And then we've got some drivers, I believe these are for the, so these would be for like the column drivers. And got a filter right here for the input. It's a little rusty as you can see. Our main power supply in that section. These are Switching power supplies, so they are a little bit dangerous. You gotta be careful that, you know, some of these are not still charged, so I'm not just gonna like pull that off and like handle the bottom of it. And then we got some other stuff right here. Looks like this is a power supply board for the process. No, this is not the pro, it looks like this would be the, the main processor up here, unless that's just for the input for like the cable decoding and stuff like that. Cause it also has the, uh, what is that? Oh, that says service only. So that almost looks like, an SD card slot or something in there. Kind of weird. We also got our optical audio output right there. All our other stuff right here, HDMI. Okay, so that probably is the main processor board down at the bottom. So this is the power supply for that. This looks like it's actually the amplifier for the speakers. And we got the wires coming out here going to the speakers. So this would be like a class D amp. And judging by the fact that there's like missing components here, looks like this these would be like additional amplifiers and that's probably why we have these covers here where there's no other component because it was meant to have or the, it, maybe they manufactured like several similar models and some of them had you know like better um, audio capability or whatever so you know this board would have been designed for multiple amplifiers to drive all this other stuff so we're probably going to see another chip down here somewhere and uh, sure enough there it is and then we've got another big old board over here this is going to be the x uh, sustain board because there's a bunch of traces going in here and the other one didn't have so many and then up here looks like 
this looks like another power supply board but it only has this one section here populated and uh yeah it's kind of interesting so it looks like there's a bunch of power supplies for like different things and it's just they're not like integrated into the their main boards whatever so this was like a pretty probably like a really early plasma model uh there's this other board right here that actually has an altera cyclone fpga down here and that's like a yeah it's just a cyclone yeah you don't really see fpgas and like later model tvs or at least not that i saw yeah kind of interesting i was expecting this to be a little more bland and there's another cover down here let's open it up and looks like another service port probably or for some other option maybe like a programming header not sure now on the power supply we just see like the usual assortment of stuff we got our input here and then we got some fuses there it looks like each one has a fuse like both the neutral and the ground not that i mean the neutral and the live both have a fuse so that's a uh, kind of interesting got some what looks like uh, neon bulbs right here you can see that right there got some uh, chokes uh we got uh, a couple relays right there big resistors power resistors and assortment of capacitors transformers obviously a big chunky transform or uh, capacitor well uh looks like we can remove this whole back section here by removing a couple screws on this side and looks like uh we actually have to remove some down there at the bottom too so there's probably going to be some down here yeah we got one there one there we got another one down there uh down there along with some of these screws right here All right, so underneath that shield, there you can see that this is our, oh, our RCA connector inputs. And this board appears to be a separate board from like the main scaler, which is probably gonna be like down on that board there. And this module here, I'm wondering if it has like board to board interconnects because I don't see any ribbons coming off of like anywhere along the perimeter or anything like that. So it's probably like screwed down and pushed into place. So I'm gonna remove all these screws that are probably holding this down and I believe this should probably lift up there are some other screws down here like holding this whole bracket here but I'm gonna remove this part first all right so I didn't realize that I didn't hit record after I removed all the screws from here and I pulled this off but sure enough it is mounted uh, with a disconnect this looks suspiciously a lot like the one that's used in the like the PlayStation 2 hard drive and network adapter that plugs into the back coincidentally enough I had just been handling one like a few minutes before I even started working on this TV so I brought it out and that's the the connector right there and it's actually the same exact size it's just the the mounting's a little different like this one has some screws here and this one's like soldered directly onto the board but yep same exact thing <laughs> that's funny and down there we can see that connector that looks like it's like for an yeah it looks like it is an SD card slot so that's probably how you would do updates on this thing it's just stick an SD in there with a update it firmware detect it do its thing update okay so this blade just has a few screws and now we should be able to see what's being used there and that's funny these are supposed to be used as sort of like a heat sinking for whatever chip is down there and normally you can see the thermal interface material kind of like protruding through these holes because you know it kind of squishes out it doesn't look like they use anything at all on these so let's see what's underneath and oops missed the screw so let's get that off it's loose okay it's still not coming off oh i don't do this whole thing here hmm. and this hdmi connector looks like it's on a separate board as well so, uh, and it's still not coming off. Dang it. <laughs> okay, is that the last one? Let's see. It's, okay, this is coming off. Yeah. It's the HDMI connector, separate board. Looks like, mm, yeah, there's a there's a chip in there. Will this case come off? Yeah, this case should come off. And, uh, nope, nope, that's soldered. It's soldered right there on that side. But that's out. This is loose and it's popping off. And uh, there we go. Nope, it's a big old Panasonic branded chip right, right there. The GC4 Pro. No idea what that is. There's another Panasonic chip right there. 
Looks like we got some some flash and analog devices uh, converter here. So it's going to be like probably like a analog to digital converter for the for the scaler. It's like uh, something that's not populated there. Got some RAM and a fine uh, IC right here. So this is going to be probably like an RGB to LVDS transmitter. And that goes out through all these like LVDS pairs right here over to, to this board. So this is going to be the one that's uh, driving or doing the decoding of like all the X and Y uh, drivers and all that kind of stuff. We've got this Mitsumi part right here. And this is probably just going to be like a multiplexer for the inputs. So it'd be like a, basically a, an analog switch for selecting, you know, like which, which inputs you want going to the to the scaler up there so that way you don't have to have like a million lines coming from here all the way to like over here and it saves on saves on pins you know on like the the chip and stuff and it looks like there's a bunch of stuff here that's also not not populated so it probably had like the option for other things too like it looks like we had a VGA port right there and that's obviously not populated and there's also another unpopulated connector right there who knows what that was for there's a few connectors here that are also not populated. There's the the audio amplifier. It has this big old connector right here, but obviously not everything's going to be used if you know all these other amplifiers are not populated. So it actually looks like maybe each one of these is an individual amplifier. So this one right here would be one of the amplifiers and it would be using two of these inductors and going to one of the speakers and then the other amplifier there would be using the other two inductors and going to the other speaker. So it looks like this whole board here was just kind of meant for like a four channel uh, solution and there's just stuff that's like, you know, not populated for those other two channels. But it looks like this chip right here, which I don't know what it is, but it's marked M5243A FP09. Maybe these are kind of like, um, like a digital volume and like treble and bass adjustment or something like that. Yeah, yeah, we got some ground strapping right there. So I'm gonna do a bunch of the screws holding all these boards in place and then we can pull those off, see what's underneath them. Pretty much everything else is uh, kind of pretty much what you see there. So you see all the, all the MOSFETs and the IGBTs and diodes and all that stuff for these drivers, like right there on that board. Uh, tons of capacitors right there and a bunch of inductors as well power resistors, you know, all that kind of stuff that you would expect to see. They're basically kind of like, these are kind of like switching power supplies, but you know, they're doing a lot of switching for all the, the voltages and stuff required for driving the, the little cells inside of the plasma display panel. Bunch of stuff down here, surface mounts. Oh yeah, before I forget, let's uh, take a look inside of this here. I removed the outer can, the this uh, big kind of mesh shield head over the top and then they had a bunch of kind of like bent tabs here that were holding this board in place and we can see right here that this looks like it was for like a cable card that would plug into there but obviously this one doesn't have the option for that uh, we another Panasonic branded chip here some RAM some flash right there and uh, this board comes off and that's the underside so more Panasonic branded stuff another RAM I see it looks like an uh, that looks like some sort of a like a bus uh, either transceiver or you know, like driver, mm, some 4000 series logic right there, another flash I see, and some sort of device. This was probably for the for like the cable card, some sort of interface device there. There's the SD card slot, and uh, some interesting stuff right here. I don't know what these are. These say XF200 and 201, so I'm wondering if there's some sort of uh, like oscillator or like resonator or something. And that's just the tuner. That's uh, pretty much it on this board. A little small power supply section in this corner. You see the inductors and some driver ICs and stuff. Or actually, those look like the MOSFETs. And these are probably the the actual controllers in here on the bottom. It's the world's only PS2 with a TV tuner. No, this would not actually work. All right, all these screws are off of these now, and I've disconnected all the the interconnects, the ribbons, so. These should just uh, easily come out right there. And no surprises that there's really not much behind this, except for that right there. It's a JRC part. It's a, what is it, A5078C? And then this is the scaler, but I'm gonna have to plug these here that I didn't unplug yet. 
and uh, this comes off now and underneath uh, meh not much <laughs> more capacitors bunch of uh, passive stuff not much that looks like maybe a voltage regulator of some sort or something diode and uh, yep that's pretty much it on that board and then this is that power supply that looks like it's for the main board and for the for the input like interface it's pretty much all they are just some small switching power supplies and looks like these here are the controllers for them it says MPD 6S010 and it's uh, two identical ones the screws for this power supply have been undone I can pull these connectors off as well Let's see what that is and uh, it's a four pin device it's a PQ30 RV31. Yeah, that's definitely like a linear component because there's no like, well, other than these, but I think those are just kind of like for a little bit of a input and output filtering. But it doesn't look like it's doing any sort of switching, at least not what I can tell from here. And this is the underside of that. Another big Panasonic part number there. So we got another flash I see for that. So we got some SRAM or something right there bunch of stuff that's not populated up here so it looks like maybe this would have been capable of driving a higher resolution panel or something and there's like a bunch of positions here on this uh, LVDS input cable that are obviously not being used so th this Altera device here is probably being used to like convert uh, to whatever like you know this particular chip here requires I don't know if you know like what exactly this one here is doing maybe that's doing some of the output stuff for like driving the sustain boards and we have a couple other ones here like the amplifier board, I think only had two screws right there. I don't see any more. Got a bunch of these retainers all over the place on this TV for these, the, the cables that all come out. So they keep them like nice and neat. Although they're kind of annoying when trying to take it apart because eh, trying to get them through some of these really small openings. I mean, the whole point is for them to retain the cables in place. So trying to pull them back out is a little bit of a chore. So now this board here looks like it should just lift off and pop out and uh, nothing on the underside looks like serviceability was kind of a thing there's a bunch of interconnects like this here coming from the amplifier that goes to the speaker i mean yeah it's got the terminals down here that you can just unplug from the speaker itself but they also had these uh, interconnects in between in the wire you can see that if we go to this side here there's also a couple there one for the speaker one for i think the front panel controllers here we can see that the cables kind of run down there underneath nothing that's like completely hardwired from like one place to another with like a single terminal on one side all right all the screws are off of this frame now so this should just lift off and uh, of course it's not going to be allowed to because of all these cables that are still kind of holding it down so this should come out we'll set that aside and wow some pretty nice cable management here They've got this plate that's uh, kind of like double-sided here, sort of allowed to spring a little bit right there. It's got two screws there, and it just kind of holds down that ribbon due to the display panel so it can run down over here to these connectors. Got some ferrite beads in there for maybe some EMI suppression, and that's all held down by this plastic sort of a hold-down assembly. So it's actually you know very nice built TV I was actually noticing also that there's this ferrite bead that's mounted to this post right here it's got a little bit of you know it's able to kind of move around a bit some compliance there uh, it is uh, held in with like a little snap right there but yeah so we got the cable here it kind of wraps around that comes back out goes out to here that looks like it's for the power switch as you can see right there or power button I took the screws off one of these plates here and looks like these are basically also the heat sinks for these drivers and those go to these connectors here so this kind of lifts off like that and then we can pull this out pop it off like that so I expect to see the driver I see is on the bottom of this and yep there they are those two black lines that go through there those are the actual drivers so it gets all of its uh, signals input signals here and power coming through all these lines you can see that there's a bunch of fine little lines coming off of each one there and I don't know what that 55 there means maybe that might be something about the size of the traces I don't know but so basically these are kind of like shift registers they have a bunch they have the power lines you know and then like the signals it would be like clocks 
maybe like a few parallel lines you know for each one and then they're like uh, chip selects and all that stuff so yeah that's how they would have like a ton of outputs for chip but only like a few uh, power and input traces so all these are pretty much going to be identical and then these boards right here we see that they have an interconnect right there in the middle is also these would just be like for distributing the like the clock and data you know all along to each chip the speakers yeah they look a little less than ideal but it's just like surface dirt and stuff that's kind of like splashed on them they're really not in bad shape like they're not torn paper's still in pretty good shape on these cones and i kind of like these little flange mounts that they have that's kind of neat so who knows i uh, put these in the box with all my other kind of like spare speakers that i've taken out of things uh, they're six ohms i don't really say the wattage on them or anything but maybe this is like a part number probably look that up i don't know they're pretty good shape there's no rust on them not bad removed all the screws from this frame here and that allows access to this board and eh, nothing underneath it either so we already saw pretty much everything there is to see on that and did all the screws and cables for the power supply so i think this should be free to just come out and it's this thing is hefty it's gonna be because of the transformers and these big electrolytics not a whole ton of stuff to see on the bottom. We've got some optic, optocouplers and some other ICs there, but really not a whole lot. Big fat traces for power delivery. Nice grounding on that screw there. Got the shake proof washer and everything. So that is the noise filter. Comes right off. Self-contained unit here, and it's got the threaded inserts there. So easier to screw on anything. You can see where the water kind of got on this here. Kind of stained. The, I think believe this is a Z sustain board. Just has these ribbons here that are kind of held in. They have these sort of retainers that kind of come down from these connectors here. These just uh, they pull off and then you're able to release these. So got all four of them undone already. Just got to pull the ribbon out and that releases that. And that will allow this to come off here. All the screws are. Oops. That's a. Uh, that's it for that. So, yeah, nothing much to see on the bottom other than some beefy traces and a lot of grounding. And on this board, all the screws should be undone. And then this just basically pops off this board here. So it's like they got edge connectors right there. And then the fingers, you see them on those boards and it just comes off. And I'm having a really hard time with the, the brightness here because the back of this is so reflective. But yeah, you see those connectors. So that's pretty much that on that board and just like the other one a lot of grounding big old power traces and you can see that these are all basically just like one trace with the exception of like some small data lines and clocks that's probably what those are going to be that go to the driver boards so underneath these we are going to see some ic's they're going to be the drivers and if we lift these up we see those are the driver ic's right there and they're Looks like they got like a metal sort of a heat spreader bonded on there. They got some silicone there kind of insulating all the pins around it. Maybe we can peel one of those off and kind of look at it. Peeling back some of that silicone on there, you can see that there's basically just like a quad flat package down there and they just have like this heat spreader kind of bonded to the top of it. But they do this because these are high voltage drivers and you don't want moisture or anything kind of like arcing across those pins since they're exposed even though they're kind of exposed over here too, but I guess it's uh, probably worse around the chip or something. Yeah, this is a uh, pretty common to see inside of these plasmas. Everyone I've taken apart, they always have the silicone around the pins of the drivers. These things right here are the supports for the stands. So basically they would be inserted in there on the bottom when you're not using like a wall mount or something. And they actually have like RF gasket material in there, I guess to maybe get like a better connection between the the legs of this or not the legs but like the pins of the stand that gonna go in here so that it's not kind of just like floating in there so that's a little more than i would have expected to see i thought this thing was just going to be like completely hollow but it's not they put a little bit of thought into that so that's what holds the display because the display is definitely the heaviest thing inside of this and i've undone these right here these are basically just like the little distribution boards for the clock and data signals going to all the uh, drivers down there on the bottom. So really nothing here other than traces just kind of running along the length of the board. 
Uh, the other one over here on this side is going to be pretty much the same thing. So, yeah, not much to see there. And this is the front panel board that just comes off. Oh, yeah, we just have some buttons there. I completely forgot what was down there. But, yeah, that's all that is. We got the infrared receiver right there, an LED. Okay, one thing I'm really curious to see here, I want to see if this big uh, aluminum plate back here detaches from the rest of the display. I've already removed all these screws like around the perimeter on these posts that hold this to the like the plastic casing. So it appears that this would lift off if I tried. Oh yeah, it's coming off. So it kind of looks like there's a like some thermal interface material between the actual glass of the display and the uh, and this plate i don't know if it's an adhesive thing or not oh never mind it's like pulling the hole no that is that's pulling all the glass along with it so i'm gonna set this down i'm gonna pull this off here and i'll get the display by itself up on this stand and we'll see if we can separate the two or not all right well that ended up going not quite according to plan as i started lifting this up i heard glass shattering and that is because part of the display separated from the rest of the display as you can see there so this layer here is basically the layer of phosphors and that right there is like the what is it the z electrode there was two layers of glass here and i thought it was just the one so the front one there kind of looks like it's another electrode probably kind of like a, a ground or something just to prevent high voltages from leaking out of the thing okay so i put this on the ground here and I've got the display assembly sitting here on this makeshift bench now. And we can see all the little individual phosphor cells in there on that that back display piece. And it's actually two, two layers of glass. You can see right here. And then the one in the front actually has two sets of electrodes. It's got the ones that are coming from the board that was connected here, the Ziza stain. And that has lines that kind of just like go all the way across the screen. We can actually see them here on this on this panel. I'm going to get the macro lens so we can actually look at them up close. And then on the opposite side of that, we have the what I believe is the X sustain. These would be X because they go like along in this direction. So there's another set of a bunch of fine little lines. You can see them right there, all those traces that go all the way across as well. And these run parallel to the ones that come from the Z. And then on here on the bottom is where we would have all those Y lines. And these are all, all running like along the back of all the, the phosphor cells. So those like all run, you know, along the uh, top to bottom of the screen. And now here with the macro lens, we can zoom in to all these cells and kind of get a much closer look at them. You can see right here on this glass piece, all the, the lines that come from the Z and the Y. So you can kind of see them both there. It's really hard to hold this thing <laughs> like uh, steady, but look over here on this side, we'll see all the little phosphor cells. Yeah, right there. There's a tiny little bug crawling around in here. Where'd it go? It was around here somewhere. There it is. It's like a looks like a little tiny aphid. Here's one of these X driver boards that I ripped off the main display. You can see there's like tons and tons of tiny little traces that go to the actual glass. So we can remove these two screws here. See how this thing is actually mounted to this aluminum plate. And this just two little Phillips screws. Uh, so that's the screws removed and this thing is like double-sided that he's or taped onto the, to the metal plate well the aluminum plate i'm trying to do this one-handed so and well there's one of the chips it kind of ripped off because i'm obviously like bending it sideways but there's actual silicon and they have some thermal grease or thermal paste interfacing the top of the chip there to the aluminum plate so that's the entire strip they're replaced and you see that both of the chips fell off the <laughs> this ribbon so <laughs> they're both right here so they have these little indentations in this plate that the chips actually fit into 
and on the opposite side they just have the thermal paste so that they get some good thermal conductivity between each one of those drivers and this aluminum plate so yep definitely a heatsink unfortunately the top of these chips or what would be the bottom i guess is coated with this black epoxy stuff so we can we can't actually see like the interesting parts of the components or what the drivers actually kind of look like magnified you can see here after cleaning this one off that the other side is just the the substrate not the side that actually contains all the actual structures so yeah i was surprised to see that there was actually a second layer of glass here because this is the one that that broke off the front of the actual display and then we see we've got some some foam down here and this all appears to be grounded like if we move some of this foam out of the way here like a bunch of little shattered glass particles i'm trying not to cut myself but you can see that there's copper there so all this appears to be grounded to the the main chassis so that would be like the anti-glare uh, coating and maybe i don't know maybe it does like a little bit of a protection there from the whatever's like emitted from the display I was trying to find the little evacuation port. It ended up being in this corner. I tried to lift it up gently with the screwdriver, but it ended up just breaking the corner anyway. So, well, whatever. Anyways, there is, if you look down in there, there's a hole on this layer of the glass. And then, so what it looks like they've done is they've just taken a sort of a funnel shaped piece, which was uh, this, this right here. And then they just kind of glued it to the back of this glass and then use that to evacuate it. I'm not sure if there's any particular gas inside display panels. I think they just vacuum, but I'm not sure. But anyways, this is where they would vacuum it out and then seal it. So that kind of sits in that little uh, opening right here. And then there was a plate on the bottom on the opposite side, which is actually held in with a screw. So I didn't actually see the evacuation port from the opposite end until I started looking for it. And then all they've got holding this back aluminum plate to the actual glass is just uh, some of this uh, double-sided adhesive. It's pretty thick and it's quite sticky and it's covered in a lot of glass so I'm not gonna mess with that too much. I tried to get a good close-up of the edge of that small broken piece of panel and this is probably one of the best pictures I was able to get. The top layer of glass that we see here is actually the rear of the display and the piece on the bottom is the front so we can see that small thin layer right there in the middle that is actually the phosphor cells and how it's sandwiched in between those two plates and just because of everything here being like so close up, those two layers of glass look super thick compared to that really, really thin layer right there in the middle of the phosphor cells. And we're pretty much done. These are all the boards that were actually inside of this thing. <laughs> a lot more than I was actually expecting. So yeah, this thing was uh, pretty packed and I can't imagine that this was a cheap TV when it was manufactured. And here's all the cabling and ribbons and everything that came out of it. Here's most of the screws, ton of screws. I'm saying most of them because there's a few that I didn't remove from the frame that was just kind of a pain because there was a bunch of glass there. So I didn't want to deal with it. So I didn't remove those, but yeah, all those screws and all these boards. Oh yeah, and here's the that HDMI input. I took the can off and that's uh, what's inside of it. But yep, that's it. Hope that was kind of interesting. Thank you all for watching once again, and I will see you guys around the bench.